Welcome to the Sector Capital Markets Day of 2019. Um, and thank you for traveling here from wherever you can. Uh, today we will discuss uh, a little more long term, but we also focus on imaging IT. Uh, sector do many businesses, but imaging IT is by far the largest. And we will concentrate also on focus one or three years out going forward. Uh, we think that's an important focus, so it will not be so much about the quarterly results and so on. We will also focus on the little helico helicopter perspective, where you see things a little above what drives the market, what drives us as a company, and what are the external forces we have to deal with. What problems do we solve? Where are we? Where are we going? And how shall we get there? First, I'd like to discuss a little Sector brand. Sector is a very important brand. Uh, you don't realize, but we work in markets where trust is absolutely critical. If we fail in protecting a nation's most important secrets, bad things will happen. If we fail in uh, running the image management of a hospital in radiology or pathology, the emergency intake will stop and the hospital will more or less cease to function. You don't buy this from three guys in a garage company. You buy it from someone you trust. So brand is critical for us. It requires customer obsession. Customer must feel that if they fail, we'll be there with them and we'll do whatever it takes to get it operational again, because everything now and then breaks. The difference between companies is how often it happens and how they act when it does happen. Uh, stability, quality and trust, as I said. It provides a healthy prices, because if you have that trust brand, you, can, you don't have to sell on price, you can sell on trust. And it also provides large barriers of entry for new entrants, because it takes time to get into the trust market. Sectra has also, our brand stands for knowledge and passion, as you see below the, the Sectra mark there. And they come from our tagline, which is the knowledge to fulfill expectations, the passion to exceed them. The Sectra brand is our most valuable asset, and this is what it shall convey. Trustworthiness, we can be trusted, we will not let customers down, and we will succeed in our deliveries. We keep our promises. If we promise it's going to work in a certain way, it should work in that way. Otherwise, we'll do everything we can. But it should not be an otherwise. But sometimes can misunderstandings. We're honest. Uh, we don't want to be felt like a people that, that trick people. We tell what we can do. We tell what we cannot do. If we cannot fulfill expectations of a certain customer, we'll rather not have that customer. Because we know it's going to be trouble down the line. And stability. We want to be a partner for a long time to be, and then uh, customers must trust us that we are following with technical development and that we are around when they need us also five or ten years down the line. Quality and customer obsession. Again, you have to feel that when things go wrong, we are there with them, whatever it takes. We will never let the customer down, even if it means a hit to ourselves. Premium product, but then you can also charge a, a little better price, premium price, and that's the niche we're in. So I will talk a little about comp company profile and philosophy, how we think, uh, because if you want to understand a company, that's a very good place to start. If we work with other companies, or if we go and you know evaluate an acquisition or something, we always go there and just feeling the philosophy and the culture of the company. That's even more, that's much more important than figures and black and, and Excel sheets and stuff. Much more important, long term. Markets. Profitable growth is easier in markets that are growing. You can fight for market share in a stable market, but it's difficult to get in. Healthcare and cybersecurity worlds are in rapid change. And as one of our early board members, Gunder Rensch, once minted, where there's change, there is margin. You have to move fast. 
but that's a very interesting place. A stable market in a non-growing market is very difficult to become successful or get into. But if the market moves fast, yourself is fast, and the market grows, it's much easier. So we try to position ourselves in such mar markets. Customers, quality. Um, quality is what you buy things for. Uh, it's, you know, it's such, if you pay money, you want something that works. And our way of competing, we have, a, some of our competitors have a marketing division that has more people and budget than we have revenues and people in the entire company. We can't fight with normal marketing against these guys. It won't work. We can try, but it won't work. Uh, we, we can fight with, however, is quality. And we do that. And as you perhaps know, we've been highest ranked for customer satisfaction in our field in the United States five years in a row. Now that is unique. I don't know any other company who's done that for being North American and five years in a row. So we're very proud of that, but it's also a very effective tool of selling because guess what? These customers tell each other, and it, as it is such an important thing, if this stops, now we have the contract of Stanford University. Now Stanford University comes to grinding halt if our systems doesn't work. You don't buy these for people you don't trust. But because of this and the reports that class are writing and our now reputation in the business, this affects our sales. Staff, one of our most important assets. I'll come back to that a little bit later. Hire, we have a saying, we stole it and we modified it. Uh, another big company had higher for attitude, train for skill, and we kind of tweaked it. We very often do that. We steal with pride and then we tweak it to our liking. So we have higher for attitude and ability, train for skill. Uh, we want people who really takes responsibility who really thinks it's important to deliver good stuff and who li who's amicable. I mean, that's an, ev not everyone can be very amicable, but you can at least be decent. And you should be reasonably smart because we, we work in markets where things move fast. And the only thing we know, being an engineer, is that for the rest of our life, things will change fast, and then we better be a fast learner. The things I read in university 30 years ago they, you know, people don't even know what some of these things were today. And that would be the same thing with people today. You have to learn for the rest of your life. And then we train for skill. We don't care if you have 15 years of experience. We'll train you. Getting the right things right. I personally meet every single indiv uh, individual who, who before they get the final job. It takes me about two, two to four hours a week. And it's the most important thing I do. Those two to four hours are very, very well spent. It won't scale forever, but it works for now. And for another couple of thousand employees more, I think. With the little churn we have, we have very little employee turnover. Um, we don't recruit that many, even though we grow 50, 60 people a year. And then it continues with culture, eat strategy for breakfast. And I, I wrote, when I made that slide first, I wrote some famous guru. I, I thought it was fun, so I kept it. It is actually a guy called Peter Parker who, who said that. Um, but it's, it's a thing that happened with WannaCry in the UK. Now, our people were on it, working full time, spending money without asking us in management. Competitors. They call them bosses, or they ask for a purchase order for the customer who stood with operation tables with a patient cut open. Ask for a purchasing order before taking action. That doesn't work. People don't like it, and it doesn't work. Well, of course, we were reimbursed afterwards, but our people jump on it immediately. They understand. We cannot have a system in a fast-moving market, a fast-moving world. You cannot have a system where people ask for management permission for everything they do. And then... We work on that very much. Culture is very important. People know in the, in the gut what to do. They do it. Sometimes it goes wrong, but you have to allow mistakes in such an environment. As long as you don't do mistake, the same mistake twice, because then you lose that little ability part. And then we have a talk. But mistakes are allowed in this company. How do you be lasting? Competitive advantage. Many of you have read marketing. You remember the P's, right? Product, promotion, 
place, price. That's the four P's you teach in business school. Uh, and and um, of course, these are valid. Process, I would add to that. Process is very important. It's not taught, but that's another P. But the most important P of them all is people. Because if you have that right, look at some of our competitors. They have, you know, 25,000 people. If we make a new product, disregarding if we have five patents, if we meet some of these big two-letter companies, and they come, there is some suspicion, you know, there's some very interested doctors that come around at the big shows. And they look and they ask and they ask and they ask, and next year that two-letter company or three-letter company, whatever it is, has our thing in their thing. And we have patents for that. Well, sue us. We have 600 attorneys, and you, know, you don't sue these companies because they will kill you for their legal fees before you win. So patents are, they are nice, but they're not, they're not the, that thing. Uh, but what should they do? Is, so better product, yeah, that gives you a temporary advantage. What should you do if we have better people? Should they fire 25,000 people? Doesn't work. This is the most long-lasting competitive advantage a company can have. If you have better people, the other ones are dead. They can't do anything. No one can. No one can. New companies can, but not the old ones. Focus. Um, when you're going to hunt elephants, bullets are better than shotguns. We look a little diverse because we have security and medicine, but in those sectors, we are very focused. We don't do EMRs, electrical medical records. We don't do general cybersecurity. We do what we do best, and then we do that. Very core quality as well. I'm a naval officer. I was a service in the, naval, uh, in the Navy in Sweden. Um, when you go to a, a Naval Academy, they still teach you about the week of the warfare of Nelson. Now, that's part history, part because he's a hero. I could speak a lot of... So, one week of full training on Nelson's war histories. Um, you know the main rule of war at sea? What he taught? Set up a goal and stick with it. That was Nelson's main war rule. So define a goal and stick with it. Behind all success lies sticking with your idea, perseverance, which is almost the same thing, but also continuous revelation. One day you realize this doesn't work and they have to shut down or change it. But we stay with some things for a long time and very often we're proven right. Unfortunately, we've been so much forward-looking that sometimes we came up with a new idea, a new product, and then we discovered it didn't work. And then three years later, it comes, because we were too early. And that's as bad as being too late. So sometimes you have to stick with it for a while. Shareholders, philosophy of shareholders. If you have happy customers, happy employees, reasonable cost control and perseverance, a rational long-term strategy in growing markets, Shareholders will be happy. It's impossible to avoid it. It will happen. But it goes in that order. You cannot start with a shareholder. Because that is not what determines the value. Okay, the problems we solve. Medical. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen this before in my presentations. This is the uh, population pyramid. They're all avail available in the U.S. Bureau of Census. Uh, right now it's kind of semi shut down because of the Trump issue, but otherwise normally it's available. It's a very interesting read, US Bureau of Census, International Database, so you can see the different countries. But this is our population, so down there on the lower end you have the four, zero to four years old, etc. And we are, have a problem in that demographics because this is Germany. Now these people produce a lot right now, but they will be up here soon. And then these people have to support them. This won't work. This won't work. Our healthcare system will not suffer for this. I put a little red line here to mark the number of people in Germany average so you can compare the other ones I show you in just a moment. This is the United States. The United States is different. They have much better demographics, but the ethnicity is changing. It's mainly uh, Hispanics, and they are 
clearly not as educated for some reason. Why the Asians are doing very well, but they do neither have a lot of children. So you see the German staple comparing the markets there. Uh, Japan is in deep trouble, as you see uh, from the output from Japan. More and more people are used for taking care of their own elderly. China will end up there soon. And there you see the comparison market size of Germany and China. Uh, that red line is the same place. China will have that. The one, one child policy worked. Now they're allowed to have more children, but they don't. They've got to use the, all the apartments are three rooms. One for the parents, one for the child, and one for the living room or kitchen. They are not, they have taken that rule away, but they're not getting the numbers up. Now that would put them in exactly the same situation 15 years behind us or Japan. Then we live longer. What happens? This is the, demog uh, the G spending per GBD GDP for healthcare per country. United States is up here. Something is not working in the US system because their statistics of healthcare is not better than ours, but they're much more expensive. But disregarding, the important thing is the derivative of this curve points in the complete wrong decision, uh, direction. This won't work. You can't spend 100% of GDP for healthcare. It won't work. So what drives these cost explosions? Well, as we saw before, the, both the, the number of old people, but also that we spend more for old people. This is an interesting curve. This is the spending for healthcare percent of GDP per age bracket. So you see Americans are not spending much more than anyone else, except for after 55. Uh, American 90 year olds are extremely expensive, while us, we also increase, uh, but not as much. So what to do? Something has to change. Evolution will not suffice. Revolution is needed. IT systems and AI will be crucial in this because we have to do something or we have to reinstitute the etterstipa, as we said in Swedish. That's the inheritance cliff. This rumor where the old Vikings took the old folks up when they didn't produce anything more. <coughs> problem solved. Some people say our healthcare system is approaching that already but we don't really want it, so we have to do something serious about it. And most focus needs to be related to the disease of related to high age. And these are neurodegenerative disease, uh, cardiovascular disease, cancer disease and skeletal disease. These are the main cost drivers for elderly people. And their medical diagnosis imaging goes all over these. We have concentrated on cancer and skeletal, etc. We partner with other companies, neurological and cardiac, but we are increasingly doing cardiac as well, and Marie will talk a little about that. We are actually growing up in this area, but we also partner with other companies. Synthetic MR, for instance, in, in neurodegenerative disease, has a plug-in in our systems. And then you can look at where the money is. This is from Forbes magazine a few years back. This is the average uh, reimbursement for medical doctors in the United States. And look at this. Look where the big bucks are. Radiology, orthopedics, cardiology, oncology is a little bit down. Now, pathology is down here, so it doesn't really fit all of it. But, oh, sorry about that. Um, but here are our main businesses up here. Um, so our, this leads to our mission statement to medical. We are to increase effectiveness while maintaining or increasing quality of patients here. That's a business idea. If we can prove we can increase effectiveness, we can sell to any countries on this planet. What business areas do we work in, etc.? Well, we have medical IT, uh, in that is imaging IT solution, managed by Marie, that we will meet a little later. Um, that is IT systems for diagnostic imaging, image management, Special focus on enterprise imaging, which is when the radiology department grows out of the whole hostel, because images are all over the system, and with special emphasis in cancer diagnostics. A very rapidly growing area. And it's a little more than 80% um, of the company. Secure communications, I will not, we will not speak of much about that today. But that's our, a name came from this, Secure Transmission Sector. Uh, cybersecurity for communications mainly, cybersecurity for critical infrastructure. Uh, I will speak a little more about that later. 
and that's about 10% of the company, a good growth right now. We need to get the profitability up, but that will come uh, with time. Then we have customer financing. That's financing of customers who wants to us to give them a managed service contract paying by the month for seven years on a fixed contract. Then we have our internal bank for that. Uh, and that's it's about 10% of the company right now. Then we have orthopedics, that's a skeletal disease of the part. I will come back to that later, but that's pre-operative planning and increasingly post-operative follow-up, which is a new area. I'll speak of that in the end of, of this day. Uh, less than 5%. And then education, we, we actually use complete packs, but we repackage it, uh, repackage, package it uh, on the large tables, as you saw out here, or we'll see in the pause. And then we sell that for medical education. All medical students of Sweden are trained on this, except the ones in, in, in Lund where they replaced anatomical dissections. And it's a good thing because all these students have seen Sector when they come out. We've sold quite a few of those tables now. And that's also less than 5% of the company. Together we account for those as in, under the name Business Innovation. The reporting structure of the company looks like this. We turn it upside down. I should be on the bottom. Customers should be on the top. That is an appropriate way of ri writing a structure of a company, not the other way around. Um, and you see we have our, our uh, subsidiaries here, um, up here. Um, and that country operations, they are run centrally. And then we have, uh, see, in and this is kind of the medical side, and this is security side with their own subsidiaries out there, own company. That is in order to prepare if we want to spin off communications one day. That is not the case right now, but we want to be able to do it if we want to do it. Therefore, we have two kind of concerns in the company. The main business, however, is PAX radiology and transitioning into medical imaging, and that is what this day is mainly about. I will discuss the other areas at the very end a little bit, but not a lot.